welcome back to a chapter a day. Happy Thursday. <laughs> um, and today we are going to be reviewing the book of Judges because yesterday we finished reading the last chapter, chapter 21. So this is a very, very, how should I say, eventful book. Starting with the death of Joshua, Joshua had died. Remember, Joshua was the next leader after Moses. And the children of Israel are moving on to Canaan. That was the land that God promised them. So the first two tribes to fight the children of Canaan, well, Judah was chosen first. God told them to choose Judah. And then Judah um, invited Simeon to come along with them so that they can have them um, fighting with them to gain the land that they were supposed to have. And then they uh, promised to go fight with Simeon when Simeon needed to get their land also. Um, so of course, the God, God gave them victory over the Canaanites and um, the Perizzites. They killed the king. Um, and then let's see what next happened. Remember, once they kill the king in war, that's it. Most times the people will turn back or they just seem to can't even go ahead and um, have that strength and courage anymore. So they're usually defeated. So that is what happened. Um, but there were still a number of nations, even though they, they won that war with the Canaanites. They, it, it, it seemed to be a large territory because you had Canaanites, Perizzites, Amorites, uh, Hittites. All of these people were still left back. And like I said, and it was mentioned later on after I thought this, that God had left those people in the land like a test for the children of Israel to see how much they would remain loyal to God and not follow idolatry, the idolatrous ways of some of these um, nations. So a, every tribe did not um, defeat all of the people or conquer all of the people in their land. Some of them, they made them their servants. Some of them, they made them their tributaries, but not everyone was um, eradicated from the lands. But then again, the Israelites sinned. Instead of them keeping strong and following God's ways, they idolatized and sinned against God, forsook him, worshiped false gods, broke God's law, and God usually would leave them to the hand of the enemy. And he would not, God is so merciful, even though he, they are being punished, he would still raise up someone who would be able to deliver them. So he gave them judges and deliverers. The first one was a man called Kenaz. Kenaz fought against the king of Mesopotamia. This was a very well-known ancient civilization. And after that, he defeated him and the land had rest 40 years. But when he died, again, the Israelites continued with their idolatrous ways, did evil in the sight of God, and, and this time God allowed the Moabites to come against them. And they had a king by the name of Eglon. So God raised up a judge by the name of Ehud, who was captain over the children of Israel. Now they defeated the Moabites and again, the land had rest for another 40 years. So if you notice each time that they defeat an enemy, they have land, they, they have no more wars. When they say the land had rest, it means there was no controversy. Nobody came against them for 40 years. So we are having a replenishing of the generations. So every time that we hear the children rebelled, it may most likely was because the new set that are coming up, the children of the previous set are forgetting or just choosing to do their own thing. And this is what is causing trouble repeatedly. Okay, so after that, now they had, um, after the rest, the land rested for 40 years, other judges came along. And then when they died, the children of Israel returned to sinning. So now, they have the Canaanites coming against them, more Canaanites, to war with them. But here God raises up a, a captain by the name of Barak, or Barak, who along with the prophetess Deborah, they go out to war against the Canaanites. Now they also have, a, the Canaanites have a captain by the name of Sisera, who must have been really awful, 
and he um, was killed by a woman who threw a rock down over, um, oh, sorry, this time, this woman nailed Sisera's head to the ground. We remember J Jael, when she invited Sisera to come in after he ran away from the Israelites, he went to her tent and she spoke nicely with him, you know, enticed him to come lay down, rest himself, cover him over. I think she gave him milk even to drink. So he's fast asleep. And she just takes a nail, a hammer and a nail and nails his head, his temple to the ground. And that of course killed him. And then those Moabites were defeated. And again, the land had rest another 40 years. So this is 120 years now since they got to Canaan and started fighting, okay? People are dying off, leaders are dying off, um, elders are dying off, new people are being born and coming along. And again, the Israelites are doing wrong. They are not following God's ways. Trouble again. The Midianites this time are coming against them. And the, Midianite, the Midianites are looking to just distress them in every way. So they are, they are taking away all their livestock. They are destroying all their fields, all their food. So now the people are hungry and they're crying out to God. God again raises up someone by the name of Gideon to go fight against the Midianites. Um, he was instructed, first of all, to tear down some altar that his father had to Baal. And after he did that, he ran away because, of course, he was scared because the man came looking for him. So his father said, you know what, if Baal is this big, serious God. So I guess maybe the father was just doing this maybe because of where they, you know, how they were living amidst these um, Midianites. They maybe really won't really, I don't know. Sometimes we do things for the wrong reasons, okay? Because we want to seem like we are with the people and not, you know, doing the right thing. But any which way, he took down the father's altar, ran away, and then he was made captain over the people. And he asked God for signs that he would have the victory. So the first one was that the fleece will be wet, the ground would be dry. Remember when we read that? The other one was vice versa, the, ground, the fleece dry, the ground wet. God answered him twice and um, through this he um, he went forward with 22,000 men to start with but God wanted to make sure that he understood this is not going to be a defeat because you have this big army so God told him do a test and when it was all over he ended up with 300 men only and I always tell myself with that movie that came out some years ago, the 300, I think they took it from here. <laughs> okay, anyway. So he went out with 300 men, blowing trumpets. They defeated the Midianites. And um, after that, Gideon, now sometimes we do some things after we have a victory with God, we somehow lose it. But he makes... Um, some sort of ephod. I always, I thought an ephod was what the priest wore, but whatever it was, he put it in the city and instead of it being like a sign that God is with them, the people begin to worship this thing and of course they commit idolatry and this brought evil in Gideon's house. I would say this, if people don't understand by now, the things we do have repercussions, good or bad. And that's for everybody, whether you're a believer or not, but even more so when you're a believer. When God pulls back from you, guess who comes forward? Satan. And he's going to torment your life. If you messing up and you know it, you are going to be dealing with Satan right on head on. Okay, so the children of Israel are now idolatizing. Gideon dies and after him, now he has 70 sons. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay. He has one son who he had with um, a concubine. And this son decides he's going to be the ruler. So he goes off, gets help from the children, the people of Shechem, and they kill off all the other brothers except one. The youngest one he manages to escape, his name is Jotham. And the, the one that the, um, who killed off the other, his others his name was Abimelech he set himself up as king so one day Jotham comes along and he challenges him for his crime and he makes a prophecy that says you Abimelech and those men of Shechem who helped you to kill our brothers y'all are going to end up killing each other 
Lo and behold, it took three years before contention broke out between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. They go to war. Abimelech kills out a lot of the men of Shechem during war. Then he's running off to some place um, where a woman is standing up on the wall. I guess he was trying to get into the city and the cities are usually walled in with gates. So while he's there but under the wall or by the wall, the, late, the woman is above there and she throws a big rock down on his head, breaks his skull. He wasn't fully dead yet, so he told his armor bearer, don't let it be known a woman killed me, you finish me off. So people would think that's how he died. So the armor bearer did what he did and that was the end of Abimelech, my goodness. <laughs> Once again, the story repeats, no judge in Israel, the people are rebelling against God and more trouble comes on to them. This time the Philistines are oppressing them. But when they go to God this time, God told them, you know what? You have been doing this. This is ridiculous now. Every time you come to me after you worship your false gods, let them help you. So now the people are beginning to be sorry and they're trying to get God's help. So they put away their gods. They start serving the only God and God has mercy on them. Isn't God amazing? He do the same thing time and time again. So now they choose a man out of their group called Jephthah, who's the son of a harlot. He was ostracized from his other brethren because they said, you are not one of us. So he had to leave, run away for his life before they kill him. So now the people know he's a strong man. So they come to him and make an agreement with him so he would fight for them and they would make him ruler once he wins. So he sent messages to the king of the Amorites who was coming after them to fight with them, or the Ammonites rather, explaining to them how it is Israel is occupying the land that he is saying is theirs. He says this was all God's plan for the Israelites to have the land. But of course the king didn't want to hear that so he still goes to war against them. So Jephthah vows to God if you give me the victory over this, these Amorites, Lord, I'm going to sacrifice the first thing that comes out of my house when I return. Ah, God helped him, and he won. And guess what? When he goes back home, who's the first person to come out of his house? His daughter, his only child, his only daughter. But he already made the vow to God. I would say this again. Always remember, God is in heaven. We are here on earth. And the Bible says this too. Be careful what you vow. It's great to make vows to God, but always be sure you can keep it. Okay. So, of course, his heart is rent. He laments, oh my goodness, I have to sacrifice my only child, my only daughter. She says, you bowed a vow to God and she agreed, hey, give me two months. Let me go have a good time with my friends and I'll come back. And he allowed her to do that. And again, I would say, I don't know if he offered her as a burnt offering or if she was just um, set aside to live in the tabernacle or be like, you know, like how nuns live, just celibate. I do not know. But they said every year, the children of Israel, the women rather, have some feasts for her, I think four times a year. I don't know. A Jewish person might be able to tell you better. Anyway, then the man of Ephraim comes to Jephthah's house and threatens to burn it down because he didn't include them in the war. So now he has to go fight the Ephraimites. He fights them, he wins, and he, has, um, he, he was the judge of Israel for six years. Okay then he dies and what does israel do well there are other judges after him so god um appeared to a woman whose husband um was um of a of the danites he was a danite from the tribe of dan and told them they were he she was barren and he told them that she would he told her because he really talked to the woman that she would conceive a son no razor was to come upon his head and no strong drink was supposed to be drank. This definitely happened. The man's name was Manoah. They had the child and they named him Samson. Now when Samson grew up, he fought the Israelites, but he also made friends with the Israelites. For some reason, he loved the Israelite women. 
and he had a several run-ins with them where he slaughtered a lot of the philistines they came after him the people of israel turned him over he still slaughtered all the philistines until finally he met up with another woman because they gave away his wife the first time and she convinced or she enticed him to give the secret of his strength and the cutting of his hair was the last straw for Samson because I know Samson was drinking and carousing. He was doing the wrong thing. So after he cut his hair, that was his last connection with God. And God left him. So his strength was gone. They put out his eyes, blinded him, imprisoned him. And sometime later, they were having a party to celebrate the downfall of Samson. He called for Samson, brought him out, put him in the temple, wherever they were having their feast two pillars samson prayed because his hair had begun to grow back after that god listened heard him and he was able to shake the pillars down onto the people so people maybe were up on the roof as well so whoever was up there fell down who was down below was crushed including him so they said over three thousand philistines were killed during that but he got rid of them most of them okay he was a judge for 20 years. Imagine that. Samson judged Israel for 20 years. I tell you, sometimes I, I can't fathom God. Can anyone by searching find out God? No, we can't. We can't figure out how God, why God does things the way he does. Sometimes we are like, God, really? Samson, 20 years you left him in Israel. God knows. <laughs> okay. Then we have this story of Micah. These were the last two stories we read. Micah was a Levite, which was a priest. He had a concubine who kind of maybe cheated on him, left, went back to her husband, to her father, I would say her, her father's house. Micah went after her with a servant and some donkeys, came up to the house. The father enticed him to stay, keep staying maybe three days until finally he said, you know what, I'm leaving, whether or not, what, regardless, I'm going. Decides to leave at night, ends up staying in a town where the Benjamites, some of the men are practicing sodomy, tries to get him out of the house. He and uh, maybe his servant, the man who is housing them, says, hey, take my daughter, take the concubine. They don't want that. So Micah shoves his own concubine outside. They abuse her entire night, leaves her for dead. She comes to the doorstep. Her hands are on the threshold of the doorstep. They say, I always say this is symbolic. And then Micah comes next morning, picks her up, throws her on the donkey, takes her to his house, cuts her into 12 pieces, sends each piece to one of the tribes. Okay, so the people of Israel say, no, this is heinous. This is a horrible thing that has happened in Israel. God is going to seek retribution for this crime. So they say, you know what? We're going to deal with Micah. So they go out to find him. He's telling them, well, Israel has been sinning. You know, things are happening in Israel. So I don't know if he meant to do that as some sort of symbol, but it's heinous. So the people said, you know what? We are going to fight the men of Benjamin. So they fight the Benjamites. Twice, the first two times, the Benjamites conquer them. And they go crying to God, Lord, you know, this is the third time. Are we going to win? God said, yes, you're going to win. Have a strategy. Put men around the city. They lure the Benjamites out. They conquer them. They burn the city. Kill the men. Moving on. Now they are so sorry. Because the Benjamites are their brothers. Okay? These are people that all, they are all related in some way. They're all from the 12 tribes of Jacob. So now they have no women for the men that are left back. Because remember, men only went out to war from 20 years and above. So who's going to be there to raise up? Because some women were already also killed. They just kind of destroyed the city where these Benjamites were. So they decided to um, go to war with the tribe, people from the city who did not go to war with them. There was one tribe from a city that didn't go to war with them, from Jabesh Gilead. And they went after the people. They swore they would kill anybody who did not go out with them. And that's what they did. They eradicated the men of Jabesh Gilead, took the woman, women from there, gave them to the Benjamites. But they weren't enough. So they had another plan. 
there were some daughters of Shiloh. I believe they were Israelites from the Israelites. They said the daughters um, for the children of Israel. Uh, let me see. I think. Yeah. They said, behold, there's a feast. There's a feast of the Lord in Shiloh. So I'm thinking it's the Lord God. Yeah. And um, the women that came out to dance, I don't know, <laughs> some part of the ceremony they told the men of benjamin who didn't get a wife go out and just grab one as you see them dancing and um take them back and that's what they did exactly and um that's how the men of benjamin got wives and um again it was mentioned that the children of israel had no king and every man did what was right in his own sight whoa i tell you this book of judges <laughs> I don't know what to describe it but it's been really intriguing really intriguing like i said if you want to treat don't sit down holding watching tiktok or looking at some gruesome uh, some silly movie this is real stuff okay some fictional stuff on the television get your bible out and read it <laughs> read it and it's always pointing back to god when we sin against god when we turn our backs against god it is key Arctic. we invite chaos this is what it's saying so that is the review of judges we are moving on to a new book starting tomorrow god's willing and it'll be the book of ruth very short book but wow thank you all for listening remember faith comes by the hearing of god's word so keep listening take care bye